easy as that. The woman got her body twisted inside an industrial mixer. Just moments ago, the woman always covered the machine with protective mesh before starting it. But this simple action displeased the supervisor. She considered it unnecessary believing it wasted time and significantly reduced production efficiency. Therefore she demanded the woman as the team leader lead the way in discontinuing the use of protective mesh. The woman disagreed directly arguing that not using the protective mesh would violate occupational safety and health regulations. However the supervisor disregarded these concerns focusing solely on performance. She even threatened the woman stating that if the production efficiency did not improve. She would demote her and reduce her salary. With no other choice the woman returned to her workstation with simmering anger and continued her duties. She wore gloves added various ingredients for making bread, and just before starting the machine provocatively glanced at the supervisor, then lowered the protective mesh again. Seeing this other employees followed suit and fastened their protective meshes. Now infuriated supervisor approached the Let woman and determined to give her a lesson. Done. She lifted the protective mesh See? and told the woman, Now if I need to add an ingredient or adjust anything, I can do it without having to stop and start and do the whole process all over again. The as firefighters quickly arrived at the scene. They witnessed a horrifying sight the supervisor's entire upper body was trapped in the machine and lifeless. Fortunately she still had a faint pulse. Paramedics swiftly administered oxygen while others began dismantling the machine. After much effort they finally managed to detach the supervisor only to discover that her entire arm had been severed by the machine. Luckily the dough had prevented arterial bleeding. Paramedic wrapped the dough around the severed arm and placed the supervisor on a stretcher preparing to transport her to the hospital. The rating table suddenly sat it. up and then half of her face oh, fell off. My face is off. Just a moment ago, this woman was undergoing plastic surgery, but halfway through she suddenly woke up and found that all the doctors and nurses in the operating room were dead. This scene terrified the woman. She quickly dialed 911. Soon rescue team wearing hazmat suits arrived. Initially they thought it was a gas leak, but after the captain checked with the instrument, no toxic gas was found. However, for safety reasons, the captain instructed everyone not to remove their masks. Then they cautiously entered the hospital and found the entire hospital eerily quiet. At this moment a firefighter found a nurse lying on the ground, but upon examination her pulse and pupils were normal. This puzzled them a bit. However, just then they heard a woman's cries for help from inside. The team immediately ran in to check. Soon they followed the sound to the operating room, only to discover the woman whose surgery was interrupted. A paramedic quickly approached to comfort the woman, while expressing that they would use cold compress to protect her skin. At first the woman didn't understand the situation. After hearing the captain's explanation she became anxious, excitedly sat up but the next moment her entire face collapsed. The paramedic hurriedly stopped her and asked her to lie down. Meanwhile the team reported that all the doctors and nurses were normal, but for some reason they were all unconscious. At this point the captain noticed that the hospital's anesthesia pipeline was in the wall, and observed that the woman seemed not to feel any pain, suspecting a leakage of the hospital's anesthesia, but the team was curious about why the woman was unharmed. The captain explained that she wore an oxygen mask during the surgery. The woman mentioned hearing construction noise from the next room before the surgery, so the captain immediately asked someone to check next door. They found that indeed the adjacent room was under renovation, and the construction workers there were also unconscious. Subsequently the firefighter discovered a cut anesthesia pipeline in a broken wall. They quickly sealed the opening. Meanwhile another firefighter found a worker lying on a table saw. Blood continuously dripped down along the blade. He quickly called for his teammate, and together they rescued the man along with the saw blade. However as they were trying to stop the bleeding, the man suddenly woke up, only to realize there was a serrated blade stuck in his chest. Then he fainted again. Afterwards the team placed both individuals on stretchers, preparing to transport them to another hospital. Due to high winds force, the hot air balloon took off with the young girl still inside. Just moments ago, the mother took her daughter to experience a hot air balloon ride. However shortly after after taking off. They encountered a strong gust of wind. The young balloon pilot appeared nervous and decided to make an emergency landing without hesitation. As soon as the two adults jumped off, the hot air balloon took off again. At that moment the pilot accidentally tripped and hit his head on a rock losing consciousness. The woman was left bewildered and quickly dialed 911. By the time the rescue team arrived, the hot air balloon had drifted far away. To make matters worse, 40 mile an hour gusts were expected soon. They hurriedly chased after the balloon with the woman. Then they instructed the woman to use the intercom system on the balloon to contact her daughter, urging her to pull the rope and control the balloon to stop. However the girl on her first hot air balloon ride cowered in a corner too scared to move. The mother could only continuously reassure and encourage her. Finally the girl mustered the courage to pull the rope, and as the hot air balloon descended slowly, the rescue team arrived in the nick of time. With the collective efforts of everyone the girl was successfully rescued. This mother in order to stop the sliding car, actually used her own body as a speed bump. Just a moment ago, the woman just wanted to get out of the car to buy something, but she forgot to pull the handbrake. It wasn't until she heard her children scream that she realized the car had already started slowly sliding down. Even more desperate, the car doors had automatically locked. In her urgency the woman had to use her body to block the car, but the car kept sliding down. Soon the rescue team arrived. Firefighters found that the woman had used her own body as a speed bump to stop the car. The captain immediately approached to inquire about the woman's injuries, but she requested them 
to quickly take her children away. Thinking that she was just scared the captain immediately asked the team to lift the car. Just as the woman was being placed on a stretcher, a car suddenly approached from a distance. The woman was extremely frightened, expressing her fear of letting the man get close to her children. The captain quickly intervened, telling the man that they were currently assessing the injuries of the victim, and he couldn't approach for the time being. Just as the man was about to take the two children away, the woman finally revealed the truth. The man who was her husband frequently physically abused her and their children. She had intended to escape with her children. Everyone suddenly understood. The cop immediately asked if the woman had reported domestic violence. Due to her extreme fear she admitted she had never reported it. Seeing that the cop couldn't do much, the triumphant man was about to take the children away. At that moment, the captain suddenly stopped the man. Get my kids with me. Yeah, um, are you sure they are your kids? Because they don't bear much of a resemblance. This got me thinking. When was the last time a wife beating cuck like you actually? And hearing that the man already prone to violence, directly threw a punch. The next second the cop arrested the man on charges of assaulting others. A group of duck enthusiasts rushed into Duck Farm. They were about to live stream the rescue of these ducks. Without hesitation they took U-shaped locks from their bags and immediately locked their heads onto the hooks. The manager quickly rushed out to stop them, angrily accusing them of illegal trespassing. The duck lovers paid no attention to him. One of them poured a bottle of vinegar onto the power switch. At that moment an accident occurred. It turned out that the machine had been accidentally activated earlier, and the person hanging on the hook immediately started moving. Soon the boy got stuck in the middle of the frame. Seeing this the manager quickly dialed 911. When the rescue team arrived they immediately asked the manager if the power can be cut off. The manager said if the power was cut then the 1400 duck carcasses would start to rot. Anxious teammate asked where the key to the lock was. The boy said he had swallowed the key. The firefighter had no choice but to use large pliers to cut the U-lock. At that moment the boy suddenly felt difficulty breathing. The firefighters immediately realized that he was probably being choked by the key. They quickly applied the Heimlich maneuver to him for first aid. But the effect was not obvious. They brought out a respirator to provide ventilation, and then used forceps to remove the key from his mouth. The boy finally regained his life. At this point the manager walked to the power switch and turned off the machine. It turned out he just wanted to teach these so-called duck lovers a lesson but his actions almost cost someone's life. This woman was unexpectedly hung upside down on a fire truck by firefighters and taken to the hospital. Just now the man hurriedly pushed the inverted woman into the fire station, urgently asking the firefighters to save his wife. The firefighters were bewildered on the spot after seeing it. When they were about to flip the woman over, they were stopped by the couple because once the woman stood up, she would immediately lose consciousness. A paramedic quickly examined her, but all indicators were normal. He then asked when she first experienced symptoms, and the man said it happened just an hour ago. The wife suddenly lost consciousness and fainted. The man was about to perform CPR on her, but she accidentally slipped off the bed and miraculously woke up. However when she stood up again she passed out once more. The man had no choice but to push his inverted wife to the fire station. To conduct a better examination they tried laying the woman flat. And unsurprisingly she immediately stopped breathing. They had to lift the stretcher back up. And the woman quickly regained consciousness. At this moment the woman asked if it had to do with her pacemaker. The firefighters suddenly realized that it could be a displacement of the pacemaker's wiring. When the woman was upside down the wiring coincidentally returned to its place. They had to hurry and take the woman to the hospital for treatment. So they sent her hanging on the fire truck to the hospital. This man leaped directly from a 300 feet high building. Then opened a parachute, slowly descended in front of his girlfriend. It turns out he did this just to propose to his girlfriend. Just as his proposal reached its crucial moment, an accident happened. The parachute was unexpectedly blown onto a pickup truck by a strong wind. Even more unfortunate, the pickup truck actually started, dragging the man along, drifting away. The girlfriend quickly dialed 911. However, the situation was even worse than she imagined, because the license plate she provided belonged to the bank robber who had just committed a robbery. Soon the police car caught up. The robber's car was speeding with the man in tow. It wouldn't be long before the man's situation turned dire. At this moment the experienced cop immediately caught up with the robber and said, They gave you decoy money. You're wasting your time. When the robber looked down, blue ink sprayed out from the banknotes. Just as this happened a truck came head on. The robber's car collided directly with it due to obstructed view. His fate would now be determined by the law. The man hanging from the parachute however was in a sorry state, suffering from extensive fractures throughout his body. Fortunately he remained conscious. At this point firefighters noticed that he was holding onto something tightly. They initially thought it was due to muscle spasms, until the man slowly released his hand. It was then that everyone realized he had clutched the engagement ring tightly in his hand. Really awesome. Traffic signal malfunctioned, resulting in a head-on collision between a cargo truck and a moving bus. Fortunately, all passengers were unharmed. Only the driver was trapped underneath and unable to move. An off-duty firefighter wanted to move the railing to rescue the driver, but the railing below was stuck tightly. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't budge the railing. Seeing water continuously flowing into the bus from the fire hydrant, he quickly got off and removed the bumper, then brought it onto the bus, intending to use it to pry open the railing, but after exerting all his strength, he only managed to pry open a piece of iron plate. The driver's leg was still trapped 
in the railing, seeing water about to engulf the driver, the firefighter became increasingly anxious, but the railing wouldn't budge, and water kept pouring into the bus, just then the backflowing gasoline ignited, seeing this the firefighter quickly grabbed a nearby fire extinguisher, but the fire not only didn't extinguish but it intensified, with no hope of escape in sight, the driver asked for the firefighter to abandon her and save himself, after saying this she sank into the water due to exhaustion, but the firefighter didn't choose to give up, he took a deep breath, and began performing artificial respiration for the driver, then he lifted his head to breathe, and immediately went back underwater to administer oxygen to the driver, while the flames continued to burn and the car could explode at any moment, but he couldn't care less, his priority was to save the driver's life, fortunately at a critical moment, the rescue team arrived, the captain equipped the man with a breathing mask, then he let him out of the bus, while other team members used hoses to extinguish the fire, subsequently the driver was also rescued, upon seeing this the man immediately stood up to check, after confirming the driver was safe, he finally breathed a sigh of relief, the driver also expressed her gratitude to him, 